Hey guys, Jose here, and guys, this is gonna be excellent news here. If you guys have not heard, I think you already have, uh, Microsoft Sim Update 2 Beta has foveated rendering built in. Now, this is great because it doesn't matter whether you have AMD or an NVIDIA GPU, you're still able to benefit from this. And regardless of your VR headset, you're gonna benefit. Now, what some of you guys are gonna want is to have the dynamic foveated rendering, which that's when you have cameras that track your pupils and it helps, it's a little bit, I think, better. Um, but still, fixed foveated rendering is gonna give us a boost. I got a 22% boost with the Quest 3. I think Pimax is gonna be a little bit less because it's a high resolution. But again, any improvement is excellent and Sim Update 2 is still buggy, but let's get into it. We got a lot to talk, so let's rock and roll. All right, guys, so the first thing is I have to say this. If you're gonna participate in Sim Update 2 beta, please do me a favor, log in, give some feedback, just jump in there. If you're in the forums, you know, or if you're in, let's say, Facebook group or my Discord, which the links are below, uh, and you're chatting away and you're not dropping feedback and you're not learning from other people, it doesn't really help. I mean, my community is a little bit closed in the sense that uh, I don't think Microsoft is inside watching and waiting to see what we're doing. Get involved. If you're downloading the beta, go to the forums. The link is down below. Now, guys, the big thing for us here is the fact that we have the dynamic footage rendering and I'm sorry, the fixed footage rendering. Uh, but this is something that I saw on Steve's video, VR Flight Sim Guy. Uh, this, you know, somebody mentioned this. Uh, let's let's give a big thanks to Nbukia, which I think his name is Matthew, who was a person who created quad views for DCS. Guys, if you don't know who this is, um, Matthew had been working with, uh, uh, I think himself, I don't know if he had a team, I don't think so, it's just him doing his thing, a uh, passionate, simmer, software engineer, Xbox, SpaceX, PlayStation, doing stuff with OpenXR, and he gave us some tools which are amazing, OpenXR Toolkit, and it was really doing what uh, I think Microsoft should have done to really give us a performance we needed. I mean, I think Microsoft should have hired him. Um, I don't know if you want to do that. He's in Seattle, Microsoft, you know, uh, so pick him up. And so he was creating these awesome programs, as we can see right here, Virtual Desktop, OpenXR, OpenXR Toolkit, which I've had and I've used, QuadViews Foveated, which uh, supports many headsets. Guys, this was a big deal that he was, uh, you know, creating this. Now, um, I had mentioned this, um, I had mentioned this a while back that Microsoft had partnered with Pimax as uh, their partner, right? And here we are, we're scrolling on the website. In fact, uh, they had posted that and I was so excited because when I got to fly out to Arizona to try Microsoft Flight Sim 2024, I was goo gaga over the sim. I mean, I, I thought it was awesome. The performance was huge. Now, it was my first time, uh, well, the clarity was huge. There were some stutters. It was my first time using a Pimax Crystal Light. I did not have time to tweak it. Uh, had I known, I would have done a couple things. Uh, but now I can say, Today, Microsoft Flight Sim 2024, even outside of beta, I'm getting great performance with bugs, uh, but the beta's given us the foveated rendering. Now, they parted with them, and people thought, oh, it's like, you know, some people were being really negative and, and just saying it's just like a market employee, this and this and that, and my thought was, man, when you have one of the companies who's creating a, a good headset now, not without flaws and not without a little bit of controversy, whether it was, you know, their customer support and trying to get a quality lenses and products out to the community. Um, I think they have been pretty transparent and open and talking. Uh, in fact, there's a couple of interviews on YouTube in which they're saying, hey, look, these are the steps we're taking. This is what we're doing. This is what we're trying to uh, change in order to uh, improve this for you guys. So them becoming a partner was a lot bigger than people thinking it's some sort of market employee. Look, man, we need advocates for VR. If you guys don't know, uh, Bell Geode was one of the people who went to the first flight sim announcement and said, you need to put VR. Some people will not fly without VR. Some people only do VR. We're a small niche within a niche, but we need a voice. Pimax was doing that for us. And so what do we have now? We have the fact that Pimax went out to Seattle. And as we can see here, uh, Suki from Pimax, when I shared this on my Discord, by the way, get in my Discord if you guys want to chat said the sim update 2 beta actually includes a lot of efforts from pimax back in january our team traveled to seattle to meet with the microsoft flight sim team uh, and demonstrate the impact of fovea rendering on vr flight simulation we showed them using dcs how turning on quad views on and off affects both the image quality and frame rates through this direct engagement we conveyed the importance of foveated rendering support in microsoft flight sim 2024 for the vr community amazing i mean like <laughs> thank you pimax um, and thank you, Matthew, for, for you know, creating this and, and really showing that off. You get me? That's, that's where Matthew ties into this. 
And so uh, this played a key role in pushing Microsoft Flight Sim to better understand the user's needs, leading to the significant VR improvements in Sim Update 2. Thank you, Suki, for that comment. Um, that is amazing. This is what I'm talking about, guys. When you're involved, you know, and sometimes it takes a bigger company, not just you know, a little person, I still consider myself a small person uh, in the big scheme of, you know, YouTube and social media stuff. But uh, I do want to create a voice. I do want to share and, and try to push our hobby forward. But how awesome is that? So what has that led to dynamic or I'm sorry, fixed foliated rendering? And let me show you what it is for those of you who don't understand. Well, let's let's answer this. If you have AMD, if you have NVIDIA, it doesn't matter. It works. Uh, and it's it doesn't matter because if you have a Quest 3, which I was using yesterday, or the Pimax, it works. Vario, again, it doesn't matter the headset. Now, I was reading some comments in my Facebook group and on Steve VR Flight Sims Guy video. I was trying to see because he had a lot of people commenting and people are having issues. The forums, if you go to the forums, there are people having issues. But the cool thing is if you're involved in the forums and you're not just complaining on Facebook, um, you get to learn maybe there's a possible solution. Someone says, by the way, drop it from 120 hertz to 90 hertz or unclick this feature, which I've seen that, you know, and then it stopped my crash to desktop. Uh, for me, my solution to stop all my CTDs on the Sim Update 2 beta was to uninstall Microsoft Flight Sim 2024 after, well, move the community folder out, uninstall the Sim, activate beta, install the Sim as a beta, clean install, no CTDs, not one. And that's all I did. Um, I am having an issue bringing my community folder back online uh, but that's fine. I'm not really worried about that because I'm more testing things out for you guys. If you don't want to test that, I tell you guys all the time, hang out, don't do it. Stay away. It's not for the faint of heart. You might lose all your files and, uh, you know, just watch me do it. So check this out, guys. This kind of explains what Foley rendering does. I think in a way that was a, a good video. As your focus goes down to the corner, everything else outside is not going to be rendered. Uh, and uh, this is with more of a dynamic foveated rendering uh, more specifically, this would require eye tracking. So as you start looking around, it's going to keep only the areas that you look at in focus. So eye tracking, I don't believe is up yet, uh, but I think that should be in the plans. It's, I mean, the foundation is there. So what does that mean? If you're looking to buy a headset that doesn't have eye tracking, uh, we don't know exactly what the numbers are as far as how awesome this is going to be. Uh, it's going to be good. But uh, I think even the way it stands with fixed foveated rendering, meaning that the outsides of your screen are just at a low resolution, which, by the way, uh, let's talk about that real fast, because a lot of times people are not sitting here. Um, you know, when you fly a plane, you're not sitting here like this, like looking down at your six pack. What's my altitude? You know, how am I doing? Am I doing OK? That's not what people are doing. Like, let's be real. You know, so um, you're looking around, your head's on a swivel. You're like, where's the runway? It's over there. Perfect. What's my altitude? Great. What's my flaps at? So you're kind of looking around as you're doing your thing. A lot of times people, you know, people say, well, when I look straight and I look down, I see it's blurry. Look, man, I don't know. Um, yeah, I mean, if you're driving your car and you can look down a couple inches, that's okay. But in VR, if I could recommend this, keep your head on swivel, look around, and um, it uh, it just flows better. You don't really see it. So what's going to be cool is that if we get the ability to adjust either the intensity of it or the range of it, right? So maybe we can make it really pixelated and just just um, save extra horsepower or we can just, you know, adjust it. Maybe like a low, medium and a high or I don't know. Um, that'll come with time. I'm going to see if I can mention that to Pimax. Uh, but, you know, that's I think that's a, a, a pretty big deal. The fact that we got that in there. Now, I'm going to recap here. This was from, I think, when was this? Yesterday, 9.40 a.m., 22% boost with fixed photo rendering. This was with a 12900K. Again, this is my computer. 12900K, RTX 4090, 32 gigs of RAM, Quest 3, running Microsoft VR at uh, preset was set to high with no tweaks. 100% render scale with TAA, meaning you can run NVIDIA uh, DLSS, which improves it even more. But I was trying to go for just a high level of clarity, and I was blown away. So check this out. I mean, this is just a screenshot, but I let it run, and I was flying in the same area. So it was going 49.50 FPS up to 62.2. Um, that is a roughly 22% increase in frame rate, and that's huge, 22% increase. So, you know, people are sharing some of their comments down below, and I thought that that was absolutely excellent. 
So we're moving forward. We're in the right direction, guys. This is huge for, for our hobby, fixed footed rendering, uh, dynamic foveated rendering. For those of you who do have eye tracking, like the OG Crystal users and some of the future headsets, you know, as this technology keeps improving, price keeps coming down, it's gonna get better. Now, uh, again, I gotta mention this again, super excited, it's coming up here, April, I think, one through five. Man, I'm gonna get the dates wrong, hopefully I'll put it on the screen here, but guys, Sun and Fun, Flight Sim Expo, I'm sorry, Sun and Fun Aerospace Expo, uh, huge air show here in Lakeland, Florida. I do plan to go, uh, most likely, either Friday afternoon, Saturday afternoon, I'm not sure, I will let you know. Uh, April one through six, there it is, Lakeland, Florida, music, air show uh it's not cheap um it's a little a little uh pricey you know as far as air show uh but it is worth it you know check it out guys and the big deal about that is that uh pimax is actually going to be there they're going to be at sun and fun and and look guys so i don't want anybody to think i'm like some sort of pimax like uh you know i love pimax i love all these companies that are putting in time money effort to increase our hobby and make it better I'm grateful for them all. Um, but yes, uh, you know, Pimax is gonna be there, so I have to shout them out. In fact, they're gonna be at the, where is this located at? Uh, the Ace Aero Club. And uh, check this out. So Pimax, Moza, Microsoft, they're working together in partnership, which by the way, the Moza AB9, if you have not tried force feedback in VR, is amazing. I'm not sure if, um, you know, DOF Reality, uh, I'm going to try to talk to them to see if they want to partner up, uh, which I do have a DOF motion rig here. We're going to talk about that later. Full breakdown on that rig coming out. When you have the Holy Trinity, which is VR, motion, and force feedback, it, it is the most amazing experience ever. Now, if you can tie at least two of those two of those two together, it is an awesome experience, right? So let's say VR and force feedback, or VR and motion, or let's just say um, you have your desktop, just 2D, you're not even VR, your desktop and force feedback. Having that tactile response to what you're doing on the screen is amazing. So Pimax is gonna be at Sun and Fun. Super excited to uh, check out the Pimax Super. That is what is gonna be happening there. Looks like they're gonna have some deals on sim gear that they're gonna have on hand. Super cool. And yeah, uh, I'm super excited to go out to Sun and Fun. By the way, if I haven't said this already, uh, I am in a traffic control. I've worked this air show with one of the orange shirts. I got my orange shirt um, and it is an amazing experience. And you're literally with the wands for the first time in my 15 years. I got to use wands to guide planes, F-16s, Challengers, MiGs, C-17s. You, you got to you know keep your head on a swivel, literally. Um, amazing experience. I haven't been able to work it the last two years because I've still been in training at the Tampa airport since I transferred. You have to train. You have to learn um, the new stuff. But I have worked a lot of this traffic uh, in and out of this uh, area. And it's really cool because I'll tell you last year, uh, in a matter of three days, I spoke uh, to a MiG-29, a MiG-27, a MiG-17, a Corsair, DC-3, F-16s, F-35s, uh, and I got to see a B-2 bomber. Uh, I think his call sign was Death-1-1 in a hold. Um, that was actually at a different time of the year uh, for a different air show. But I'm telling you, when you see these things on the radar, I'm just geeking out. I, I'm a huge geek at work. That's why I love everything we do with flight simulation. All right, moving on here, guys. So Pimax Crystal Super, super excited to try it out. Hopefully I get one uh, to, if not, I might just buy one because I think this headset's gonna be great. Um, but if I can get my hands on one for review, it's gonna be coming out. The Pimax Crystal Lite has been my daily driver. Amazing. I like to let my friends use the, um, the Quest 3 because it's simpler. I don't like adjusting mine so much. It's kind of a little stingy with it. And um, actually not true. My dad was flying in here, and I just threw the Pimax on him, and um, he was blown away. In fact, he bought a Pimax, which he has not unpacked. Dad, you got to unpack the headset. You got to let me come over, help you set it up. He's been so busy. Um, you know, living that busy, retired life. If you're retired, let me know. If you're, you know, my dad is retired, and he's still busy. So Pimax Crystal Super, there it is. Um, I'm going to have to go on the specs a little bit later, but what we see here is going to have some of the highest resolution, a QLED panels, local dimming, eye tracking, two microphones, uh, reduced size and weight. I mean, this is gonna be a smaller form factor. I think there's gonna be a lot of good things about this headset. I'm super excited to give it a try at Lakeland. Again, that's why we're talking about it because it's gonna be available. Now, another headset that I've been just super blown away by was the Somnium Space, uh, the Somnium VR1, not Somnium Space, that's their Metaverse. 
Guys, the Sony MVR1 is just an absolutely awesome headset. And that was a weird animation there. <laughs> um, I've had a couple friends that have picked it up and they're super excited. It was to this time, I mean, I have not tried a clearer headset than the Somnium VR1. Um, and it has amazing pass through as well. The Megan X is another headset, super light, but it does not have eye tracking and it does not have, um, you know, any sort of tracking. You're going to need base stations for this headset. So the other headsets we're talking about right now have inside out tracking. I'm not sure about the Somnium. I think the Somnium does have inside out tracking. Uh, and, and, you know, as we talk about this, guys, we see all these companies uh, getting involved and spending money. You know, um, Meta Lab Reality, guys, they lost $3.85 billion. Let me scroll down here real fast. I want to talk about this. Again, people talk about, oh, you know, Pimax is doing this stuff. They're partnering with Microsoft. You know, it's a, it's a, you know, a gimmick. No, it's not, guys. It's companies who are in the field working with other companies related to the topic, the hobby, and trying to move it forward. People might not like uh, Zuckerberg or Facebook. Check this out. Look at how much money they have dropped. Quarter four, they lost $2.1 billion. Uh, you know, uh, that was of 2020, uh, 2022. I mean, somebody do the math for me here. Four, three, two, uh, three. I mean, billions. Of, they are literally, guys, okay. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you is that Facebook is losing $10 billion a year in in meta reality now i say losing they're investing this the quest 3 the fact that the quest 3 is so cheap the fact that the quest 2 you know you can get a quest 2 second hand for 75 bucks sometimes online 100 bucks you know quest 3's online second hand are insane so facebook is putting the time and the money to invest all this uh energy and money to grow virtual reality which i think is amazing Pimax is doing their part and at a much smaller scale. So I kind of see and understand the growing pains. It's kind of like when we think of Wing Wing. Wing Wing is crushing it when it comes to quality products, right? I don't have a uh, one of the things pulled up here, but um, that's going to be coming out here soon. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Wing Wing is crushing it, and they are almost expanding too fast, you know? Great job, Wing Wing. Um, the PAP panel is on the way to, uh, to me. I do have the PFP panel behind me. And I'm going to have some content on that. But what I'm saying is none of these companies are as big as like Facebook dropping billions of dollars, but they're trying. They're trying to keep up with demands. They're trying to keep the quality up. They're trying to ensure that they deliver products, have enough items in the system. That way, if you have an issue, they can send you a replacement. It's a lot of stuff. The, the best thing we can do is give them feedback, vote with your wallet, check reviews, and um I'm optimistic. You know, at the end of the day, I'm very optimistic. And I think the hardware is moving in the right direction. The fact that we can get some of this hardware at such a great price is absolutely unbelievable. By the way, the precision approach panel from the uh, 7.3 series is out. And uh, I think it just went out last night. $157. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know, I don't know if that includes shipping and taxes. And that is in the U.S. It does change based on your region, guys. So, look, there's a lot to go on here, guys. I'm super excited. The big thing here is going to be the uh, sun and fun. Um, I'm super excited. Jump in my Discord. Let's talk. Let me know if you're going to be going. That's how we're going to be able to meet up at sun and fun. And, uh, yeah, give me some feedback. If anything was interesting, drop it in the comments below. If you want to know where I've been in the last few months and kind of, you know, find out, hey, where were you? You haven't posted since December. Check out my last video. It's linked right here somewhere. And uh, take it easy, guys. Peace out.